This next video segment is to review for you the process of adding and subtracting real numbers and then when I turn the page we're going to review multiplying and dividing real numbers. Very important concept to understand and it's best that you can do it in your head without a calculator. So first of all, when we add, we have to think of the problem in with two types. One is where you're adding two numbers that have like signs. You've been doing that all your life. When you add the number 2 and the number 3 together, you're just accumulating those up and you get a total of the number 5. Um, think of that as M&Ms. You have two M&Ms, you add three more M&Ms and you have a total of five M&Ms. However, if these numbers have signs like a negative two and a negative three, then the accumulation of these two is five, but it turns out to be a negative five. Here's how you think through this. You would take those two numbers and you would add the absolute values of a negative two and a negative three. Well, the absolute values are 2 and 3, and you'd add those, and you'd get the number 5. Then you'd give your answer the common sign that they share. They share a negative sign. So you have to give your answer um, so that it's a negative 5, the sign that they share. Think of it in terms of money. You have $2 of debt, and you're going to add to that $3 of debt, and you now have $5 of debt. I kind of find adding with like signs pretty simple because they're similar items, or, and you're just accumulating them up again, but you got to put your sign on. So a negative 7 and a negative 10 adds to be a negative 17 because 7 plus 10 is 17, and then I have to give my answer the like sign that these two numbers share. All right, gets a little bit harder when you're adding and you have different signs or unlike signs. So let's talk about this example. A negative 5 and you want to add a positive 2. So in this case, it it's like... Um, if you were talking about objects, a negative 5 might be 5 red M&Ms and a positive 2 might be 2 blue M&Ms. And if it was money, think of it as money, $5 of debt and $2, a positive $2, you'd be in less debt when you add these two together. Well, here's the, the process. You subtract the absolute values of these two numbers. So the absolute value of a negative 5 is 5. The absolute value of 2 is 2, and you subtract those. 5 minus 2 is 3. You give your answer the sign of the number with the higher absolute value. Between a 5 and a 2, the 5 would have a higher absolute value. Remember, absolute value is always positive. And its sign is this, so I have to give my answer a negative sign. Here's another way to think about it. If you had, so this is more a better example of the money scenario. If you had a negative 5, accountants often think of negative balances in terms of you're in the red. So say that there's a negative 5 disks. There are 5 disks, but they're red because we're in the red. And remember, we're adding 2 to that. And accountants think of blue or black as as we're good. We're not in the hole. We're in a good situation. So I want to take a negative 5, which is these red disks, and add to it a positive 2, which is these blue disks. Well, the interesting thing is that when you add a negative disk with a positive disk, they cancel out. They, add, they combine to be nothing. So a negative 1 and a positive 1, they cancel out. And all you're left with then, when you collect those negatives and positives, all you're left with is three red disks. So again, three red disks is all that you're left, left with. It's best if you can learn the process. So I'm adding two numbers. The seven is positive. There's no sign written in front of it, so it's positive. The 9 is negative. There's a sign written in front of it. So I have to subtract 7 and 9. Think of it as 9 minus 7. Go bigger minus the smaller, and that's a 2. And then of these two numbers, which one has the higher pull? I often say the pull. 
a 9 is bigger than a 7. So the negative 9 had more pull. So when I add these two numbers together, 7 blacks and 9 reds, I'm left with 2 reds when I combine those numbers with opposite signs. Let's do another one, a negative 10 and a positive 14 I'm going to add together. So the difference between 10 and 14 is 4. Of these two, this one's negative, this one's positive. The 14 has more pull. It has a bigger absolute value. The 14 is positive. So my answer when I add these together is a positive 4. I do not need to write a plus sign when my answer is positive. All right, let's look at subtraction. Subtraction is kind of nice because it follows the rules for addition after you do one thing in particular. But before we go there, I'd like to have you think through this. You're, you'll probably laugh at me. Um, 2 minus 2, 0, no problem. 2 plus a negative 2. Well, that's like taking two black disks and combining it with two red disks, and when you put them together, they cancel each other out. So you have 0 again. Geez, both of these problems have the same answer. They both have an answer of 0, but one reads, one reads 2, subtract 2, and the other one reads 2 and add a negative 2. So I'm going to write the 2 minus 2 down again, and look at my first statement here. It says that when you subtract, you should change the problem to addition and change the sign of the number following. Some people call it a swipe-swipe process. Change the problem to addition and change the sign of the number following. So swipe-swipe is what you do with any subtraction problem and then you follow the rules for addition as we did up above. So what was 2 minus 2? I just made into 2 plus a negative 2. I'm going to do several problems now. So let's go with 5 minus 9. So when I subtract, so it's 5 minus 9, I'm going to add the opposite. So two swipes with my pencil, and after having done that, these two numbers have different signs. The 5 is positive, the 9 is negative. I'm adding now. So when I add, and if the signs are not alike, I subtract their absolute values. 9 minus 5 is 4 and I give my answer the sign of the number with the higher absolute value, which is the, the 9 has the higher absolute value. Let's do a very similar problem, but now I'm going to make the 5 negative. So it, the first one was 5 minus 9. Now I'm doing a negative 5 minus 9. I'm still going to swipe, swipe, but now I have to add two numbers that have the same kind of sign. These are both negative values, so I have to add up their absolute values. 9 and 5 add to be 14, and I have to give my answer the sign that's common to both of those. That's the negative sign. Again, another, another problem very similar to this one, but now I'm going to put two minus signs here. So a negative 5 minus a negative 9. So this is different. This is still a subtraction problem, but you're supposed to change this to an addition problem, and you're supposed to change the sign of the number following. Well, the number following is a negative number. So when I swipe, swipe this one, I'm going to add the swipe over here is going to be a vertical swipe because that was a negative 9, and I have to make it positive. And so now what I have is an addition problem where the signs are not alike. This one's positive. This one's negative. So I have to subtract. And then I have to give my answer the sign of the number that has more pull. The 9 is larger than a 5. It had a plus sign, so my answer is a positive 4 for that one. Look at how similar these were, and look at their different answers. Let's just do a couple more, and then we'll do multiplication in the next segment. So a negative 13, take away 17. I'm going to add the opposite. And now both of these numbers have a common sign. They're both negative. So I have to add their absolute value, 13 and 17 is 30, and put the common sign on. Let's go with one more problem, 12 minus a negative 22. So again, I'm going to add the opposite. 
Now I have two positive numbers that I need to add together. We've done that all our lives. And 12 and 22 add together to be 34.